The Suzuki Swift Sport has long been a car embraced by serious drivers who know a great handling hot hatch when they see it. Though not especially powerful, it's agile, responsive and brilliant fun for not a lot of money. Few potential buyers know this, so the idea with this third generation model is to widen its appeal with a smarter interior, lower running costs, a little more grunt and even sharper handling. For all that, it'll still be a well kept secret in this segment, but one loyal buyers will enjoy hugely. The Suzuki Swift Sport has always offered buyers a simple, light, hot hatch formula. This third generation version, the first to be turbocharged, aims to do that with a little more sophistication. Some have called this the golden age of the hot hatch. And that's a controversial perspective because over the decades, almost everyone has a past favorite. Still, there's little doubt that across the current crop of categories on offer, the shopping rocket genre seems to be in rude health. You don't need to spend the super hatch money to properly enjoy it either. In a tiny Volkswagen Up GTI city car or a Fiesta ST Super Mini, you can these days have more fun at sensible speeds than you think would be legal. Pitched precisely between those two cars in terms of both power and price is this one, the third generation Swift Sport. The two previous versions of this contender, launched respectively in 2006 and 2012, both used a high revving, normally aspirated 1.6 litre engine, which was central to their appeal. So the decision to finally replace that with a 1.4 litre turbo unit is one that loyal buyers will have to get used to, particularly as the new booster jet unit has a very similar output, now rated at 140 PS. Others might also question Suzuki's decision to price this Mark III model so close to the much pokier Fiesta ST and other models of that ilk. In response, the Japanese brand's keen to reference the fact that this is now the lightest and therefore potentially the most agile car in the class, and that the power that you do get is more usable because that booster jet engine makes it available low down in the rev range. Suzuki also makes the point that this Mark III Swift Sport has a class-leadingly impressive equipment specification, which includes more standard camera-driven safety kit than any other model in the segment can offer. Uh, none of this will matter though if this third generation car is unable to entertain in the way that its predecessors did. Time to put it to the test. The Swift Sport formula has never been defined by outright power. What's always mattered more with this model line is light, chuckable agility, something that's easy to lose in an era where every fresh design has to be safer, stronger, and laden with technology. Fortunately though, the Hartex platform that Suzuki has adopted for its latest generation of compact hatches allows this third generation model to continue that featherweight philosophy. And that is a major contributor to the 70 kilo weight saving that this car enjoys over its predecessor and that's enough to push the curb weight here below the one ton mark even a little uh, city car sized Volkswagen up GTI can't manage that other more directly comparable super mini derived hot hatches are around a quarter of a ton heavier all of which is important if as we do you embrace the Colin Chapman mantra that greater power makes you go faster in a straight line but lighter weight makes you go faster everywhere this Mark III Swift Sport is certainly faster everywhere than its predecessor, but then you'd expect it would be. Now, although the power output on offer, 140 PS, is much the same as that developed by the preceding model, it's kicked out this time by a 1.4 litre turbocharged booster jet engine, which has nearly 50% more torque than the previous 1.6 litre normally aspirated unit. Just as importantly, you can now access the 230 newton meters of punch much lower down the rev range for around two 2500 rpm. The old car needed twice as many revs before it would deliver really meaningful progress. Now it's not a setup that's geared towards victorious traffic light Grand Prix style starts. Rest to 62 takes an unremarkable 8.1 seconds on the way to 130 miles an hour. But in the mid range where it really matters, there's a reason why this car feels a fair bit quicker than those figures suggest. Especially when the road gets twisty. 
cart-like driving dynamics have always been a major attraction for Swift Sport buyers, and they've been further developed here uh, by a stiffer front suspension system with Monroe shock absorbers front and rear. There's initially a touch more lean than you might expect when you first throw the car into a corner with enthusiasm, but the chassis quickly digs in with impressive traction, clinging tightly to your chosen line and encouraging you to ask more of it. Uh, the sharply responsive variable ratio steering system helps too, and there's an appropriate soundtrack to go with all of this, a fruity growl that embellishes the engine's 2,500 to 4,000 RPM sweet spot, although despite the specially tuned exhaust, it's more obvious inside than out. Suzuki's engineers, well aware of this model's normally aspirated heritage, have put in a lot of work to try to ensure that the boosted jet turbo doesn't suffer from an irritating degree of lag. They've built the little turbine directly into the cylinder head in a bid to eradicate that, and the effort's largely paid off. It's one of the things that makes frequent use of the short throw six-speed manual gearbox uh, no longer quite so necessary, which is perhaps fortunate because the shift quality isn't quite as tactile and satisfying as we remember it being before. Second gear corners become third gear sweepers and it's much easier to carry greater speed from bend to bend. The aluminium pedals are perfectly placed if you're one of those with a perfected heel and toe competition technique. Uh, the bucket sports seats position you commandingly and the larger 285mm diameter brakes inspire confidence too. Uh, there's even a little screen between the uh, coloured instrument dials that shows you the quantities of power and torque that you might be recklessly deploying at any given moment. Although because the graphical readouts are uncalibrated, they don't actually serve much of a useful purpose. Still, the whole experience of driving this car is supposed to be fun, and it's likely that the PlayStation generation will adore that advanced multi-information display's eagerness to brief you on things like lateral acceleration, turbo boost, and g-force readings which is all good for those times when you can drive this car as it was designed to be driven. What about when you can't? Well, you expect a tautly set up little super mini to be a rather less than comfortable highway traveling companion and perhaps a downright unpleasant thing over the urban potholes and tarmac tears of the school run. Here, there's none of that. Instead of just stiffening the springs up to control body roll, the development team found other ways to maintain chassis composure, spacing out the wheel hub and the wheel bearings, for example, uh, which helps to explain this Swift Sport's supple suspension movement over porous surfaces. It really is no more unsettled over bumps than any lesser Swift model would be, and that is an impressive achievement. Given then that this car is now more everyday usable, it's perhaps appropriate that safety standards for this third generation model have taken a quantum step forward. Uh, stereo cameras combined with a laser sensor to deliver the kind of technology that will baffle Swift Sport buyers who previously saw this car as something of a stripped out weekend plaything. Autonomous emergency braking, uh, lane correction, radar cruise control, and advanced forward pedestrian detection all feature a standard. There's even a weaving alert function that buzzes at you if the car thinks your reactions suggest drowsiness. Yeah, drowsiness in a swift sport. No, we can't imagine that either. We started this test imagining that at the wheel here, we'd really notice the power deficit to those well-publicized, much faster, small shopping rockets that don't actually cost that much more, but we haven't. And if we were to own this car, we wouldn't. It'll be interesting to see if target buyers of this Suzuki end up feeling the same. This car doesn't only show some other affordable small hot hatches how they should drive, it also, for us, offers a good template on how they should look. Muscular shoulders, blacked out A-pillars, and what Suzuki calls underspoilers all round deliver a potently understated level of pavement presence, but also a demeanor that's assertive enough to suggest that you might be in for a bit of fun at the wheel. This Mark III Swift Sport is uh, 50 millimeters longer than a standard Swift model, and it sits 15 millimeters lower to the ground than the previous generation version did. 
A little disappointingly, unlike that old car, there is no longer a three-door body style option, but Suzuki has sought to retain a three-door light look by hiding the rear door handles in the trailing edge of the C-pillar. It's a sporty touch, much like this heavily emphasized lower character line that flows up into the rear wheel arch. An enhanced carryover element from the previous model is found in the way that the uh, blacked out window pillars I mentioned earlier create the illusion of a floating roof. Uh, and the polished alloys are 17 inches in size and they incorporate an uprated braking system with 285 mil diameter ventilated discs. Uh, at the front, it's appropriately all much more assertive than is the case with more standard Swift variants, thanks to the completely redesigned bumper with its corner cutouts for the fog lamps. Uh, the grille, uh, which is designed to emphasize this Mark III model's 40 millimeter increase in width, gets a black central molding strip for more prominent placement of the number plate. And further up lie full LED headlamps with integrated LED daytime running light strips. We like the rear treatment too, especially the prominent roof spoiler and this lower diffuser with its twin circular pipes for the specially tuned exhaust system. It's all complemented by these strong shoulders with their smeared back tail lamps, which are LED illuminated in this top model. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff that you can't see, namely this model's stiff, sophisticated, hard tech platform. And that's been designed around what Suzuki calls total effective control technology. Now this uses lots of high strength steel to make the structure very strong, but also low in weight, which is the main reason why this Swift weighs so little, even by relatively light class standards. Um, its curb weight tips the scales at just 975 kilos. That's 70 kilos lighter than the previous generation model, despite this Mark III version's extra equipment. Uh, to give you some perspective, that makes this car 287 kilos lighter than something like a Ford Fiesta ST, and it's even 60 kilos lighter than a tiny above 500 100. Still think all small hot hatches are much the same? Well, you feel this model's lightweight when you slam the driver's door shut, which isn't ideal, but otherwise, by super mini standards, the cabin feels quite nice, providing you're not expecting premium quality fittings and acres of slush molded soft touch plastic. You're not paying for that kind of thing here and you don't get it. What you do get though is just enough interior differentiation to make you feel you're in a serious hot hatch. The grippy branded sports bucket seats are probably the highlight, proving to be supportive and surprisingly comfortable, providing of course your frame is narrow enough to fit into them. Uh, there is also a set of aluminium pedals, a chrome accented gear knob with a red stitched gaiter and emotive red flashings on the fascia and the centre stack. Uh, the three-spoke sports steering wheel with its matte and satin black inlays feels good to hold and through it you view two main gauges, a rev counter with a red dial face and a speedometer that's primarily coloured silver. In between the gauges lies what Suzuki calls an advanced multi-information display. That's a 4.2 inch color screen, which as well as the usual time and fuel consumption screens, shows an impressive variety of sporty readouts. Now these include a G-force motion meter, some rather curiously presented red and yellow power and torque readouts, uh, turbo boost data, and graphically streaming displays showing acceleration intensity and braking force in real time. Otherwise, it's all very much as it would be in any ordinary Swift, which means that the center of the dash is dominated by this seven inch color infotainment touchscreen. Now, it's certainly not short of standard features. It includes navigation, a DAB tuner, Bluetooth, and Apple CarPlay and MirrorLink phone mirroring connectivity. Unfortunately, though, the graphics look dated. Uh, the processor times are quite slow, and there are no shortcut buttons or dials to help you access the information. So you end up stabbing away at the touchscreen and just covering it with fingerprints. What else? Um, well, build quality seems a touch better this time around. A legacy, perhaps, of the fact this car is now once more built in Japan. The previous generation model was assembled in Hungary. Uh, the materials used are nicer too, and there are some neat design touches. These high set central air vents, for example, which help to draw attention away from some of the less tactile materials used in some less obvious areas of the dash. All the switch gear is easy to reach and intuitive to use, and the circular ventilation controls at the base of the center the stack here uh, look smart and work well and they control a now more effective twin electric fan assembly.
There's good forward visibility through the upright windscreen, but the over the shoulder view could be better. So you'll need the standard rear view camera. And that makes up for the fact that there are no rear parking sensors. As for practical touches, well, things get off to a decent start with two properly sized cup holders. Um, they're just ahead of the gear lever. Uh, a shallow storage tray lies just in front of those. And if the designers had allocated a few more pence for a non-slip rubber surface for that receptacle, it would have been ideal for your smartphone, given that there are 12 volt USB and aux in ports just above. As it is, your handset's gonna slide all over the place as soon as you get underway. Unfortunately, there's nowhere else provided that will hold it securely since in the standard spec, Suzuki doesn't provide any sort of storage box between the seats. Uh, the door bins are acceptable, but the glove box is tiny and a further cup holder is provided just behind the thankfully conventional handbrake. And there's a useful ticket holder on the driver's sun visor. Right, time to take a seat in the back, and that's accessible via the concealed upper door catch that we mentioned earlier. Now, this third generation model is a fraction shorter than its direct predecessor, and that's something which might lead you to expect the worst here, or at least it might, before you also appreciate the fact that as part of this new design, this car's front and rear axles have been pushed 20 millimeters further apart than they were in that previous generation model. As a result, uh, there's extra wheelbase length, and that ought to free up a bit more rear seat room. Having said all that, we don't want to raise your hopes too much. Uh, this car does remain one of the more compact models in the super mini hot hatch segment when it comes to rear seat space. Some might even find it a touch claustrophobic back here. Still, thanks to that length and wheelbase and to some extra room that's been liberated from the engine compartment, there is now marginally more legroom on offer than there was before. As a result, in contrast to previous Swift Sport models, which struggle to accommodate rear seated adults even on quite short journeys, this Mark III version is now more credible in that regard. We're not sure that we like the fact that you sit slightly lower than was the case with the previous model. And it's a pity that when you are sat back here, uh, the front sport seats rather obscure your view ahead. It's also slightly annoying that the provision of those front bucket chairs uh, seems to mean you only get a seat back pocket on the left hand side. Three adults confined to the back here are going to need to be on very friendly terms indeed, but at least the unfortunate middle occupant won't have to contend with the kind of over-prominent centre transmission tunnel that you do get in some rivals. Um, there are no door pockets back here, but you do get door bottle holders that can swallow a litre bottle of water. Plus, uh, there's a small coin cubby by the electric window switch, and it's easy to reach forward into the uh, central cup holder just behind the handbrake. Out back in the boot, we're promised that the benefits of this model's wheelbase increase will be more obvious. And sure enough, the light tailgate raises to reveal uh, a cargo area space which offers 25% more room than was available with the previous generation model. The 265 litre capacity isn't anything like enough to threaten the segment class leaders in this regard, but it is at least enough to get this Suzuki back on a competitive footing. A Ford Fiesta ST, for example, offers only 27 litres more. Uh, we were a bit disappointed to find that the adjustable height luggage board that you get on some similarly sized Suzuki models can't be had here, even as an option. Uh, that would alleviate to some extent the issues that are raised by the high loading lip that you have to negotiate when you're getting heavy items in and out. Uh, there is a tyre inflation kit beneath the boot floor. Unfortunately, like most super mini makers, Suzuki doesn't provide a space saver spare wheel as standard, uh, nor has it thought to provide tie down hooks to keep heavier loads in place. On the plus side though, uh, useful touches include a bag hook and this uh, storage compartment in the wheel arch that could take a few uh, small items if need be. Should you need more room, the rear bench folds in the usual 60-40 split, although it does leave quite a step in the floor once it's flattened forward, at which point a uh, modest 579 litre cargo area is freed up.
Much has been written about the pricing of this third generation Swift Sport, mainly because its £18,000 asking figure at launch was a bit more than most commentators were expecting. In some respects, it's difficult to see why. Yes, it is quite a jump from the £14,000 figure, which applied at the launch of the second generation Swift Sport back in 2012. But times have moved on since then, and this Mark III model is not only faster and much better equipped, but it's also vastly different in terms of its safety and infotainment standards. Plus, as Suzuki points out, the increment uh, that this top hot hatch model demands over the priciest variant in the standard Swift range is still pretty much the same as it always was, not much more than £1,000. Still, it might have helped if there'd been a stripped out entry trim level for enthusiasts wanting a sport, but buying on a budget, that would have enabled this car to reach down into the sector for warmed up city cars too. As it is though, there's just this single fully kitted out spec based around a five door body style. There's no three door option, nor can you have anything other than six speed manual transmission. Part of the fuss made over the price of this car relates to the fact that its asking figure puts it only around £2,000 shy of much more powerful 200 PS Super Mini hot hatches like the Ford Fiesta ST and the Renault Sport Clio, although Suzuki dealer deals may conceivably increase that increment. Nevertheless, it's a point well made, particularly given the fact that this Swift isn't much more affordable to run than the Fiesta ST. Suzuki, though, points out reasonably that more direct, comparably powered competitors cost much the same or more. A Say a Tabitha FR 1.5 litre Evo 150 PS model is similarly priced as in a Mini Cooper 5 door. Uh, a Ford Fiesta ST line 1 litre T 140 PS model costs about £500 more. And a Vauxhall Corsa GSI with 150 PS retails at around £1,000 more. Only hot hatches from the city car segment cost substantially less. Uh, journalists insist on comparing this car with the Volkswagen Up GTI, which in five-door form costs around £3,500 less, but that car has only 115 PS on tap. An arguably closer option is the 145 PS above 500, but that's now a pretty old design, and like the Up, it's substantially smaller than the Suzuki inside. If, having considered all that, you conclude it is a Swift Sport that you really want, then a key determining factor may well be the generous equipment tally that this car comes with. So let's cover that now. Uh, as you'd expect from a hot hatch, there's a bespoiled body kit and a smart set of alloys, uh, these polished ones being 17 inches in size. You also get LED beams for the headlamps, the daytime running lights and the rear lamp clusters, plus front fog lamps, rear privacy glass, uh, a keyless entry and start system, power folding mirrors, auto headlamps, an alarm and all-round electric windows. Inside there are front bucket sport seats, aluminium pedals and a leather trimmed sport steering wheel, plus automatic air conditioning, uh, driver's seat height adjustment and a pollen filter too. Uh, there's a reversing camera uh, that makes up for the rather surprising emission of rear parking sensors. Uh, infotainment provision that's accessed via a seven inch center dash screen and it includes navigation, uh, Bluetooth and a smartphone link display audio package which has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring connectivity. Uh, there's a DAB audio system with a couple of tweeters too, uh, although that has just four speakers. As for options, well, many of these are aesthetically orientated. Uh, there's a coloured wheel decal set that's available in yellow, blue or red. And you can add a yellow Suzuki branded centre cap for each wheel. Uh, you can change the colour of the door mirror housings and you can add a chromed boot trimming strip and an aluminium fuel cap cover. Plus there are rain and wind deflectors. For the inside, you can add a deluxe carpet mat set or an anti-slip driver's floor mat insert. You might also like to add door sill trims, those are available in either aluminium or black, um, and you can add a centre armrest with extra storage. For the boot, there's a sill loading edge protector and a boot liner cargo tray. 
That's enough on that. What about safety? Well, Suzuki wants to emphasize that one of the advantages of this car's Hartec chassis is the way that it disperses collision force energy more efficiently, and that considerably improves crash safety. Uh, extra body welds for this sport model have further improved this structure's rigidity. And in addition, as you'd expect in this day and age, this Swift sport model has ABS anti-lock brakes, um, ESP stability control, a hill holder clutch, and a brake assist function for emergency stops. There's also a tire pressure monitoring system, and that's along with twin front, side, and curtain airbags. Plus, there are two Isofix child seat mounts in the rear bench. What sets this uh, Swift Sport apart from its competitors, though, is the amount of camera-driven safety technology it includes as standard. Stereo cameras mounted either side of the interior rearview mirror combine with a laser sensor to deliver five key features. Uh, those are autonomous braking, adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning, a weaving alert function, and high beam assist. In case you're not familiar with this technology, let's quickly cover it. Uh, Suzuki's version of autonomous braking is what the brand calls dual sensor brake support. If the system detects a possible hazard, it'll alert you with visual and audible warnings. If you don't respond, then the brakes will be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident, if it can't be avoided completely, that is. Um, adaptive cruise control that uses a millimeter wave radar to automatically regulate your distance to the car in front at highway speeds. Um, lane departure warning, well, uh, that and the weaving alert function are both activated at speeds of over 37 miles an hour, and they're purely there to warn you um, with a steering wheel vibration if you've deviated over the lane markings, and with an instrument display warning flash if you're weaving, perhaps through drowsiness, within your carriageway. And finally, high beam assist automatically dips your headlights at night in the face of oncoming traffic. Now, you won't find another affordable hot hatch with more safety provision than this. This car's adoption of booster jet turbo technology may have transformed it in terms of pulling power, but the real reason for the switch away from normally aspirated induction lies in this model line's need for a significant step forward in running cost efficiency, which, sure enough, this third generation Swift Sport delivers. Even when it's measured on the new, much more stringent WLTP test cycle, the combined cycle fuel figure shows an improvement to 47.1 mpg, while the CO2 reading is enhanced to 135 grams per kilometer. It's a bit unfortunate then that the frequent need to replenish the tiny 37 liter fuel tank robs you of the perception of frugality that this kind of showing ought to create. Still, the WLTP readings don't lie, and the sophistication of the booster jet power plant certainly plays its part in producing them, using a clever small displacement, high torque turbocharger, and a variable fuel pressure control system that more accurately optimizes fuel injection to suit the way that you're driving. But equally important is this third generation design's lightweight, high strength, steel rich, hard tech platform, which accounts for nearly half of the 70 kilo overall weight saving that this car enjoys over its direct predecessor. You can monitor any attempts at frugality via a graphical consumption readout that can be selected from the Instrument Binnacle's advanced multi-information display screen. Uh, you can also select an idle stop time readout, which tells you how long the standard stop-start system has been operational for. This also tells you the total idle fuel save that this has generated, although we're not really sure why you'd want to know that. What about other costs? Well, a key cost in running any hot hatch lies in insurance, and a Swift Sport's rated at Group 35D, which does seem somewhat unfair given that a more powerful Ford Fiesta ST rates at Group 28E. Something more directly comparable, like a Vauxhall Corsa GSI, is rated at Group 16D. Uh, the VED cost for year one, based on the WLTP running cost figures, will be £205, and that'll drop to £140 in year two. 
What else? Well, once your Swift Sport's been registered for three years, it'll become eligible for Suzuki's fixed price service package, which will enable you to get servicing carried out for a single fixed price that'll include parts, labor, and VAT. There are around 180 Suzuki dealers in the UK, and they're noted for excellent customer service. Uh, you can even out the cost of regular maintenance with a service payment plan, which covers you for anything between one and three garage visits. Now that could be important because this Swift needs fairly frequent garage visits every 12 months or 12 and a half thousand miles. As for residual values, well, after the industry's standard three-year, 60,000-mile operating period, uh, experts predict that this car will be worth £6,725. That's 35% of its original asking price. Like every Swift variant, this one comes with a three-year, 60,000-mile warranty. Uh, Suzuki maybe needs to think about extending that to match rivals now offering four, five, or even seven-year plans. There's also a year's breakdown cover, which extends across the whole of Europe and includes roadside recovery. Uh, you can extend it yourself at extra cost via arrangement with your dealer. A 12-year anti-rust guarantee comes with the car too. When we last tested this model back in 2012, we begged Suzuki not to change its simple, uncomplicated formula, but they have, and rather to our surprise, we found ourselves to be rather enamored by this end result. Now for sure, it certainly would have been better if the brand could have brought this car to market for a few thousand pounds less, but we still think that the asking figure being demanded here is, well, still pretty fair for what's being offered. The Swift Sport does, after all, remain one of the best kept secrets in GTI motoring. Modestly powered, perhaps, but modestly weighted too, which means it can routinely put the wind up far more exalted machinery. Previous versions are almost all owned by people who wouldn't give any thanks at all for an offer of trading their car against a pricier, pokier, warmed up Fiesta, Corsa, or any other shopping rocket. As for this new era design, well, we shouldn't underestimate the scale of what this Japanese brand's achieved here. This third generation Swift Sport is quicker, it's more efficient, and it's better equipped than its two predecessors, yet it's still as much fun as ever. Sure, other fast super minis offer greater levels of straight line performance for not a lot more, but they're mostly not as safe or as well equipped, they'll be less frugal to run, and in most cases, they'll be less pleasant to use over poorer surfaces. Of course, none of these things will be compelling reasons for a Swift Sport purchase, and they shouldn't be. What really matters here is that you get old school GTI fun without old school crudeness. Now, true, you probably wouldn't be moved to buy this Suzuki after looking at the specs in the brochure, but take a test drive down your favorite back road. We reckon you'll see this car a whole lot differently. Need convincing that power isn't everything in a performance car? Well, if so, you need to drive this one. We guarantee it'll surprise you. <laughs>